Hello, great to see you all again. My name is Andre Andrew Herman. I'm working for the Global Logistics Cluster Support Team as a logistics officer and also as the Global Training Lead. Together with me is... Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. My name is Julie Curis, and I'm a training officer with the Global Logistics Cluster. Today, we want to talk to you about our achievements and the future plans, the outlook from 2022 or in 2022 and then uh, the years after. Uh, we would like to focus on a very specific period, which is 2018 to 2021. Why? Because this period has been a very significant period for the logistics cluster training team, because we were able to deliver. It was a commitment to delivery, and it was just enabled because of the generous uh, contribution from the German Federal Foreign Office. Without that contribution, we wouldn't have been able to deliver what we have delivered. So just to give you a bit of an overview, uh, a training methodology, a specific logistics cluster training methodology was developed. We have also developed an evaluation strategy. Also, furthermore, we have published a logistics cluster facilitation handbook. In addition to that, 11, in just three years, 11 new training courses published and or developed. Uh, we have also implemented or basically continued uh, with our state-of-the-art logistics cluster e-learning channel, where we have over 5,600 learners from uh, different organizations registered in one of the not or more of the 19 online courses, where we are basically still working on a translation, but many are already translated in five different languages. So we were able to deliver 338 trainings in 33 different countries. That's quite difficult to read. 6,445 participants from 390 organizations were trained. And when COVID hit, we were very quick in actually changing our modality. So we, we were developing a couple of innovative training modalities, such as virtual reality or gamification elements. Maybe a bit of a breakdown here. So I'm not going to bother you with all the, the numbers, figures, but so you see uh, basically our main face-to-face -face trainings we have de de delivered. And it starts always starts with the cluster induction training, basic internal logistics course. We also offer the logistics response team training, of course, LRT, very well known. We uh, have also uh, developed and implemented gear up, which is a simulation based training exercise together with the emergency telecommunications cluster, cluster coordinator trainings, training of trainers, warehouse management trainings, et cetera, et cetera. So basically uh, a number of those trainings were delivered on a global level. Plus we have supported slash facilitated uh, 260 trainings on a national level. A little bit more about our e-learning channel. So as Andre mentioned, this is available to the public. Anyone who wants can create a profile and it's free for them to use. It just takes a minute to register and then they have access to all of the courses. Here you can see a list of some of the courses that we have online. I'm not going to go through them all, but the important thing is that this is available to anyone, anywhere. So this means even in a time of COVID, we've been able to continue to offer trainings. We've been able to offer them in additional languages and really create opportunities for organizations that maybe don't have the capacity in-house to provide trainings. But here we create kind of a one-stop shop full of trainings from some of our partners, as well as some of the ones that we've developed on our, on our own. And we hope to continue to build, to build out this catalog in the coming years. We've also been trying to understand what are the impacts of the training program. So you probably remember us at the last GLM talking about the midterm review. And that was where we really focused on the level two evaluation and level three evaluation following the Kirkpatrick evaluation model. Level two looked at the transfer of knowledge and level three looked at the individual behavior change. We're going beyond that this time and we're trying to do a level four evaluation. So level four is going to look at the outcomes of the training, asking the question, what is the real operational impact when the training program is having across the humanitarian logistics sector. We're trying to ask the question, how does training increase or impact operational effectiveness and interagency co cooperation? You might be wondering, how on earth are we going to do this? 
Well, we've decided to focus in specifically on the LRT or the logistics response team training. So we've reached out to all of the past participants in that training and past facilitators and asked them specifically, were they uh, part of the 2019 hurricane response? From that, we're doing a series of interviews in collaboration with a partner to see and understand, did they use any of the training that they learned? And if they did, what were those impacts? The project's still ongoing, so results are coming soon, but we ask you to stay tuned and we have a lot more to say about this in the future. Andre, pass it back over to you. Thank you, Julie. What do you think about changing realities? Ah, this is a really interesting topic, Andre. I think, though, it's better to show people than to tell them. What do you think? Uh, I think so, too. Oh, oh. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to our VR virtual reality base camp. Well, wow, yes, welcome to the base camp of the virtual reality, as truly mentioned. That's something we have worked on in the past year, one and a half years actually already. Um, thanks to the contribution of uh, the GFFO, we were able um, to come up with such a great solution. The virtual reality base camp is usually used for logistics response team trainings, but we can use it for any other event too. Let's have a look, follow us. Over here, we have our OSOC tent as part of our LRT. We would love to take you in as a quick tour and so you can see what it looks like when meetings are happening. Follow us in. Oh, hello. Hello, Julie. Hello, Andre. Oh, hello, Philippe. Philippe. Well, Philippe, what are you doing in here? Hey, I was preparing for the next meeting, but I guess there are some secret element. Yeah, oh, it's okay. It's uh, it's hidden. So I'm preparing for the next meeting and uh, make the, the, the tent uh, really good looking and ready. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Philippe. So Philippe is one of uh, the partners, one of the colleagues on behalf of the partners. He helped a lot in developing all of that, contributing with his uh, advice. And he's also very often supporting Oops, the implementation sorry. of logistics that response team trainings. <laughs> Philippe, um, what do you think about this uh, new world, this virtual reality and the LRT? Do you think it works or what is your opinion about that? Ah, I have to be honest. Uh, yes, it works. It's uh, it's really incredible. In fact, we we get used to VR, and we it really helps for the for the simulation. Uh, it's it's not yet uh, like if we were face to face in the same room, but it really helps compared to to a call via Zoom or via Skype. And uh, we tend to forget that we are in VR. In fact, we 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 start to believe that this is uh, our world. Uh, and um, be my guest uh, in in the in the next training. It's uh, I, I even come to the training uh, in between session just for the pleasure. Thank you very much, Thanks. Philippe. Philippe, it's always it's always great to see you here, and hope to see you again soon. Hope to see you soon. All Andrew, right. Shall we continue the tour? Absolutely. Let's go back. <laughs> All right, colleagues, um, but that's not uh, not all, right? So the virtual reality so far, we have a base camp, we can meet, we can interact. But what is missing? Good assessment sites. And this is something we're looking into developing in, in the coming uh, weeks, actually. Uh, and here is a bit of a, you can see here the video, there is a bit of a sneak preview on how it could look like. A wonderful airport assessment. Other stuff we're or other things we're looking into uh, the development uh, for the next year, Julie. So a couple different things that we have in our outlook, uh, you can see on the PowerPoint behind us. So the first one is on st standard setting, and we already talked to you about this at the last GLM, and it's something that we're still actively working on, thanks to many of the contributions of our partners. So the first element here, as you can see, would be the competency framework as well as creating standard modules that we can share with our partners so that they can just take a package of trainings and implement them wherever, whenever they feel that they need them. Andre? Uh, this is also uh, contributing to the localization of the training program. So we're really looking into localizing uh, our knowledge sharing uh, elements 
which is basically through the collaboration with educational institutions. I mean, for now, it's an outlook. We will need to, to see how it works. But building a community of trainers and uh, installing uh, ed, um, our, our knowledge into educational institution, institutional learning programs, uh, we think is really contributing to, uh, to establish a basically a basic knowledge on emergency logistics. Thanks, Andre. That leads perfectly into the next point on training delivery. So here, of course, we're still committed to delivering trainings to the community. We hope that you'll be a guest in one of our next LRTs or logistics response team training and get to try out VR yourself. But that's not the only thing that we're going to be offering. We're going to see us increasing the number of TOT or training of trainers that we offer, as Andre mentioned, so that we build a crew of people who are ready to go and to help spread the kind of concepts that we have developed uh, within the logistics cluster training network. We're also going to be having some new courses and some gamification elements. So stay tuned, a lot more to come your way. Uh, and last but not least, we're still aiming to become a one-stop shop when it comes to no logistics knowledge. Uh, that means that we would like to share all the different trainings from different uh, organizations uh, in one community, exchanging practice, best practices, exchanging knowledge. That's a bit uh, our vision there. Happy to discuss more.